Well, what's been the subject of a fair bit of discussion for those that follow the uh, agri-technology space is a government notification that was released uh, which aimed to cap the royalty that was payable to the originators of seed technology. Then, uh, just a few days ago, the government decided to withdraw that notification, keep it in abeyance to be more precise, while it sought uh, feedback and had consultations with various stakeholders. Uh, joining me this afternoon is S. Barwale, Deputy Managing Director at Mahiko Private Limited. Mr. Barwale, thanks very much for joining us on NDTV Profit. I just wanted to address a larger issue first, uh, because that was, uh, you know, the the basis for your interactions today, which is how do you build sustainable agriculture in a critical state like Maharashtra when in recent months drought has been a huge issue in many parts of the state, also at a time when the government is actually facing opposition in Maharashtra when it's trying to bring changes to the marketing of agricultural produce, i.e. the APMC Act. What's you know, the path to actually building productive agriculture in Maharashtra? So we believe as a company uh, that uh, seed is one of the most effective ways of getting modern technology to the farmer in India. You take, uh, for example, the big drought crisis that we are having in Maharashtra today and the big debate about the water that is consumed by sugarcane, for example. Uh, there, is, there is work going on not just in our labs but in labs around the world where uh, there are traits being introduced into sugarcane which makes it drought tolerant or makes it require or consume 50 percent of the water that otherwise would be required to be consumed. So what the government needs to do is enable a policy framework which allows such technologies to be trialed actively and quickly in the state so that they can finally be taken to the doorstep of the of farmer. You know, today you take BT Brinjal for example, great technology developed by an Indian company for India it's not been deregulated in India, but it's doing wonders in, in our neighboring country, which is Bangladesh, right? Uh, so the government needs to facilitate an environment where they can actually encourage companies to come forward with their innovation and help them get this to the farmer as quickly as possible. Okay, you know, talking about technology and agriculture, the government has decided to keep in abeyance for three months the notification which actually capped the license fees for all new uh, genetically modified seed technologies. Is that a relief for the current sowing season of cotton? Of course, I don't think that's, uh, that notification has specific ramifications for the immediate season, but it did have ramifications from a long-term survival of the industry and for research in India. And I'm very happy to note that the government has said that they would engage in wider consultation before notifying such guidelines and we keenly await those consultations to happen over the next few months to formulate a policy framework that will enable innovation and encourage innovation rather than hinder and stifle innovation in agriculture. Okay, can you just flesh that thought out a little bit, the larger impact of that notification which you know basically seeks to cap the royalties uh, for you know, uh, GM cotton seed technology, 10% for the first five years. What impact could this have for India? So we believe that we need to encourage innovation and to encourage innovation, the policy framework should assure that investors or entrepreneurs who are able to develop new solutions to the problems that exist today are able to market their products effectively at prices which the market determines and to partners they believe they can work with. Uh, of course, keeping in mind that all stakeholders are, are who, all stakeholders' interests are considered in this process. Uh, if that freedom is not there, then why will I as an individual invest seven years, eight years of my life and hundreds of crores to develop a technology when I'm not certain whether I will have freedom to actually own and market that technology once it's approved? Uh, so the ramifications I think specifically for our sector in India would be that it would discourage any further investment in agricultural research which already is an abysmal half a percent of GDP as compared to the global leaders in agriculture like the Americas and uh, Israel etc where they spent more than two three percent of GDP on just agricultural research. 
show some straight talking there but uh, mr barwali what is the feedback that you're going to give the government because we understand that you know the government has actually kept the notification in abeyance because it's saying it, it wants to go back to all the stakeholders and get their feedback so what are you going to say so i think for us it is important to engage with the government and understand what are the concerns which drove the the notification and see whether we as an industry uh, can work together with the government to build trust and address those con concerns while still creating an enabling policy framework for for giving technology providers freedom to operate their technologies okay on a slightly uh, separate note because i've been sticking to the notification what's your r and d pipeline looking like currently what are you focusing on here and now sure i think as a company we have been investing significant amounts of uh, our resources on research uh, we invest 10 to 15% of our revenue on research on a year on year basis which is significantly higher than any other private enterprise in agriculture in india uh, we have focused that effort largely to tackle three groups of problems in india insect tolerance related products which will make crops more resistant to various insects that that attack them mm -hmm. bt brinjal being a classic case in point we have wheat tolerant products uh, we have a product in the regulatory pipeline uh, in collaboration with monsanto in cotton called bolgar to rrf which is tolerant to a herbicide and helps the farmer better manage his weeds and the third group are the ab abiotic stress tolerant products which will help you ensure or protect your yield in situations where there there is a water shortage or there is an input shortage like a fertilizer shortage So these are the three broad categories we've been working on. We have a series of products which are already in the pipeline in India and abroad in in these uh, three categories. Well, Mr. Barwali, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks very much for joining us on NDTV Profit. Uh, we're going to take a break. Two